Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Conquer College Admissions. Today in this video, I'm going to help you finalize your class selections for the next upcoming year. So let's go ahead and get started. I get on a lot of calls with our students and this time around, the most frequently asked question is about finalizing their class selections for next year. School is starting up again very soon. I know some of you are going back to school shopping, getting new clothes, and I know it's such an exciting time and I think I miss that part the most about my high school years. But anyway, to stay on topic with today's video, I want to reference a couple of questions that my students ask me about how to strategically select and finalize class selections. And even if you already worked on your class selections for next year, you can always change it, request to be reviewed again, and it is flexible. So I think this is a good time for us to kind of look at it together and see what edits and enhancements will need to be made with the class selections for next year. So the first question I got was, I'm not a very STEM heavy person, and I don't plan to major in pre-med, engineering, computer science, applied mathematics, any of those. So do I still need to take AP Biology, AP Calc AB? And so that's a question that I get very often. Or on the other side, a student who is in the STEM will ask, well, do I need to take AP Ling and AP Lit? Because that's something that I'm not going to major in. And so at the end of the day, the question is, do I need to take the classes that do not support my academic interest? And when we look at AP and IB and honors, we categorize that under what we call rigor. So in college admission officers are looking at your transcripts, they are looking at, okay, if your school allowed you to take this many AP, IB, honors classes, did you take as much as possible or did you challenge yourself? So let's say that the school did offer AP Ling and you did not take AP Ling, they can easily say something about how you didn't challenge yourself or the rigor part is missing, you went the easy way. So rigor is very important in Ivy League and top tier college admissions process and it could be a very easy reason why a college can reject you. So to answer this question, you do want to take a lot of rigorous classes, but sometimes we do want to be a little bit strategic about this process. So let's say, for example, you are not going into humanities or anything like that. So you're like, OK, should I take a push or not? And then the question is, well, I was told by my upperclassmen friends that this a push teacher is known for not giving A's in his classes and the highest grade you can get is a B or you know, most students end up getting C's. If these are some of the information that we are collecting, then we do make a strategic decision to say, well, okay, let's not take this class, um, but instead let's compensate this lack of rigor by taking a college class over the summer that supports your academic interests or taking an outside AP class um, that also supports your academic interests. So we still want to compensate it instead of saying, okay, well, you know what, I'm not going to take it because it's not relevant to my academic interest. So it does require a little bit of strategy. And if you need more help with, okay, this is my class selections, this is my situation right now, and you need more guidance on your you know, unique situation, then I do offer a one-on-one -on -one 45 minute intro session. I'll go ahead and put in the link in the description box and we can hop on that call and go through your class selections to make sure that you're doing everything that you can possibly do because your transcript is the most important single file that you'll be sending to colleges so what's on there is going to be just so crucial in this process so anyway that's the first question that i've been getting a lot these days so i hope that you were able to learn from the student's question as well the second question that i got was the student wants to pursue biology in the pre-med area maybe bio neuroscience somewhere around there and the school does not let her take biology, AP biology at her high school. So in that case, it's weird that you're declaring your major as bio when you didn't even take bio class at your high school. So what I had her do was to reach out to the counselor and ask, is there any way that I can take AP bio and honors bio because that is the major that I'm gonna go for. But if the school has a strict policy like this, then I will have her take biology, introduction to biology and even maybe microbiology during summertime. And then she'll go ahead and take the AP bio her senior year. So, you know, your college application, they are 
series of documents that need to tell a story. College admission officers, when they review your file, they're not just looking at one single paper and saying, okay, well, yeah, the student's in, out, whatever. They're looking at multiple files and trying to make a story out of your situation. Obviously, they do this quickly, so you need to grab their attention um, in a short span of time. Um, but that's another thing to think about. So when you're declaring your major and you're saying, okay, my academic interest is going to be chemistry. But if you've never taken chemistry, it's like, uh, why are you, you know, declaring that as your major? What experiences do you have? So obviously there's research positions and passion projects and extra curriculars that you can do outside, but they also want to see that you did well in your AP chemistry class if you're trying to major in chemistry. The next question that I got often um, is the foreign language aspect. So when you look at most colleges, especially Ivy League and top tier colleges, they want four years of foreign language. And so if you don't have this and you're saying, well, I'm just going to take two years of Spanish and call it quits, that could also be another reason why they can reject you because the foreign language aspect is very important in this process. So keep that in mind if you are saying, you know, I took two years and then I decided to not do it and I'm going to go back to your senior year. That's also not the best idea because think about it, you're going to forget the language that you learned in the past two years for one year and then you have to go back to it. So the classes, the homework assignments, the exams will even be harder for you. So make sure you take four years of continuous for a language so you can meet that requirement. Those are some of the frequently asked questions that I got. Obviously, every student's case is a little bit different, but I try to group them in bigger categories. Your class selections are really important because what decision you make can get you in or get you rejected because if the rigor aspect is not fulfilled, it could be an easy way for colleges to say, you know, why didn't you challenge yourself? And you don't always have to take no for an answer. If a call, if, a, if your high school says, well, we can't do that for you, we can always brainstorm other ways to make sure that your academic interest is being demonstrated in a compelling way. We always come up with ideas because there are also outside resources that is available. One question that I actually do not like is, should I like self-study for AP classes? And no, please don't do that. It's such a waste of time. I'd rather have you take a college credit course and show colleges that you've taken it and got an A in that class. Self-studying for AP is not where we want to go and I don't know if you've heard but um, College Board and you know APs there's a huge AP score inflation thing going on right now. So AP scores I treat them like extra credits. If you do well on them great. If you don't do well on them obviously it, it could hurt you but it's, it, that, that's probably not going to be the reason why you get rejected because they are looking at your transcript your class selections sat extracurriculars essay recommendation letters and you know all the moving pieces so i hope that you found this video to be helpful i'm also hosting a free live training for juniors this is for class of 2026 high school student you can register at passionprep.com forward slash live and that is happening on august 8th and we have another one two weeks later on so if you just register you will be able to come to one of those sessions and it is completely free and i mentioned this earlier but we also have a one-on-one -on -one 45 minute intro session to get your individualized questions answered so that purchase link will also be in the description box thank you so much for watching today's video and i'll be back here with another one very soon